Hi, this is Tim Leung. Have you ever wanted someone to protect you? Have you ever wanted someone to look up to you? Wanted someone to kind of like be a hero so you could emulate him or her? Well, did you know that Jesus Christ is your big brother? That's right. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if we are part of God's family, Jesus is our big brother coming up next. First of all, let me say greetings to the Home of Christ Church in San Francisco. Glad to be a part of your worship today. Today, we're going to talk about the family of God and specifically how Jesus Christ is related to us, how God sees it, and what we can expect from him as our big brother. Big brother, you say? Is that true? Well, let's take a look. Romans 8, 29 puts it this way. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be firstborn, firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Now, how many of us are big brothers and big sisters? I was one, but I can tell you honestly, I was not. I was not a very good one. I was by no means a perfect big brother. But even so, as much as we fought, my second brother, he demonstrated that he knew the expectations of the Dilo. What's Dilo? Well, in Cantonese, Dilo means big brother. It also means the boss, the big man, the one in charge. If you're in a gang or a triad or something like that, you have a Dilo, right? You've got the big man who calls all the shots. Well, one day in the summertime, we were off of school, of course, and the doorbell rang. My little brother went to the door. This was strange. He wouldn't normally go to the door. He was very, very young at the time, but he went to the door and he started talking about 10 whole minutes. And then he comes to me and he does something so peculiar. He says, it's for you. I'm like, for me? You've been talking for 10 minutes. How come it's for me? So I go to the door and it appears that there's this young punk and he wants to pick a fight with my little brother. And I'm like, what are you doing? This is your problem. He's mad at you. You deal with it. And he says, oh, no, you're the big brother. This is your job. <laughs> See, there was an expectation, right? That even if the little brother got into trouble, if he mouthed off, if he got in over his head, his big brother's duty, his obligation of his big brother was to fight his bullies. If Jesus is our big brother, what can we expect? Well, God expects us to emulate him. Here, it's clear that he chose them, being meaning you and me, he chose them to become like his son, like him in character and in integrity. If you really want to know what to emulate, look at Galatians 5.22, I believe. The fruit of the Spirit explains clearly what Jesus was like. But let's take a look at what we can expect from our Dilo, Jesus Christ. I think one of the best places to look is Psalm 23. Now, let me quickly say, I do not have time to do justice to this very deep and meaningful and rich passage. I'm not going to pretend to give you an exhaustive study of Psalm 23, just a very quick overview. And hopefully it'll whet your appetite 
to do some in-depth study. Number one, he provides for us. As our good shepherd, as our big brother, as our Dilo, he provides for us. The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23 says. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. If we're going to go along with this analogy of we are the sheep of his pasture, well, Sheep need grass, and he doesn't provide dry hay. He provides green, luscious grass. He doesn't provide a raging river where we are afraid. No, he provides still waters. I look at it this way. A good big sister will pack your lunch in a good way. What do I mean by that? Well, when I was growing up, you know, some of my friends came from big families. They had five, six, seven brothers and sisters. And if that's the case, by the time the little brother and sister come along, the big brother or big sister pretty much will take on many of the duties of the parent, especially the big sister, because, you know, big brothers, are, well, you know. They're not that mature sometimes, <laughs> but the big sister will help out. The big sister, if you need a lunch to go to school, the big sister will pack you a nice tasty lunch. The big sisters I knew from some families would even name the baby brothers and sisters. I think of, you know, one family in particular, when the parents came over from the old country, they're grasp of the English language was not that good. And so they just had the big sisters name the family. You pick out all the English names, all right, for our family. They even picked out their own names. And so you can imagine what kind of, you know, cute things that they would come up with. Let's say one of the big sisters, their favorite candy was Skittles. Well, you can wind up with a kid named Skittles Fong. Skittles Fong. <laughs> Leah. Snickers, Leah. <laughs> so our big brother provides for us. <laughs> Number two, he prepares us for success. He prepares us for success. I put it this way. The dialogue will teach you the family's kung fu. All right. If you were a fan of those old um, Chinese Kung Fu movies like I was growing up, um, you know, you, you know that the plot's always practically the same. Bad guy comes in, kills everybody. And on their deathbed, the, the, the dad tells the son, go see Uncle Low Fat and Auntie Me Sing You and have them teach you our family secret stinky monkey kung fu and and then he practices his kung fu the dai lo will teach you the family kung fu all right um if you take in martial arts if it's a big school often you don't get to learn under the main uh, headmaster right you you get to learn under his his disciples and this is what Jesus does for us. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. He prepares us for success. You know, people wonder, oh, what's God's will for my life? I wish I knew God's will for my life. Fact of the matter is, most of God's wills already revealed to us in the Bible. Oftentimes, people just want to find out God's will for our lives because then we can determine if we want to obey it or not. No, it doesn't work that way. No, we've got to make up our mind to obey God before he reveals his will to us. But you know, he wants to do it. He wants to do it to bring himself glory for his reputation, for his honor. He wants to keep us on track. He prepares us for success. He strengthens our hands for battle, David says in another song. Number three, he protects us from evil. 
we talked about that little stunt that my little brother pulled, you know, having big brother show up at the door, chase away his bullet. Well, it's like walking to school with your big brother past your bullies. All right. Let's say you're a little brother or sister and there are bullies at school that want to ambush you and give you a swirly or want to cram you into a locker or a garbage can. And you just go to school, but with your big brother or big sister and the bullies, they won't even dare. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Listen, I struggle with this, especially after the stroke. I had a stroke, you know my story. I had a stroke three years ago and it has lots of ramifications on body aches and pain. One time I even had panic attacks. We, my heart began palpitating and I had to go to the ER. It's scary. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. You know, God doesn't always remove the scary circumstances. He doesn't. Sometimes he lets us walk through very challenging and difficult and even intimidating circumstances, but he tests our faith. He says, you walk through this, my child, I will hold your hand. I will hold your hand. Do you remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Bible? Daniel's three friends. So mad was the king. He said, stoke up that furnace seven times and throw them in. The fire was so intense, it burned up the guards that threw the men in. And when they went in, the king said, did we not throw in three but there are four loose walking about in the fire. And one of them is like the son of God. Many people believe that Jesus himself showed up. Listen, when you and I go through the darkest valley, when you and I go through the most difficult circumstances where we feel that we just can't go on, there might come a time where you just cling on. You just hold on. You try your best. And all you can do is you just get from morning to noon, from hang on from noon to night. You hang on all night. You hope that you can get through to the morning. Well, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You hang on, you make like Star Trek and you cling on to God. You cling on to Jesus and Jesus will show up. I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Now I'm told that the rod, the shepherd's rod is to beat off the wolves, beat off the lions and bears like David did. And the shepherd's staff has a crook in it, right? Has a hook in it. And that is to hook the sheep and steer them back on the straight and narrow when the sheep go astray. Number four, he prizes you in front of others. What else does our big brother do? He provides for us. He prepares us for success. He protects us from evil. But also, he prizes us in front of even our opponents, even our competition, even our enemies. God wants to favor you in front of others. You prepare a feast, David says, a feast for me in the presence of of my enemies. When I was growing up, one of our favorite phrases was in your face. Well, that's not a very Christian thing to say, I've learned. But 
Nevertheless, that's what we said. In your face, man, in your face, in your mama's face, in your daddy's face, in your grandpa's face, you know, we just, like, whole family, okay? But to shame someone in front of their face, David says that. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies, in your face, dude, all right? You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. I think of a few words here. He lavishes riches upon us. What does it mean to prepare an all-you-can-eat feast, a banquet, a buffet? He lavishes riches. You honor me. What is honor by anointing one's head with oil? He chooses. That means God is going to choose you in front of others. He's going to honor you by making you his choice. His first choice. My cup overflows with blessing. That means there is an abundance. Listen, God is not a stingy God. Many of us grow up tough times. We, we have to script. We have to save. We have to pinch pennies. But you know, God is not a stingy God. When he pours into your cup, he wants to overflow it. He wants it to spill over on everyone around you. Be generous. Hey, brother, sister, if God has blessed you, don't be afraid to be generous. Some of the most abundant and affluent times in my life have occurred when I stepped out in faith and given. When we have given to others, God gives to us over abundantly beyond all that we can expect or even imagine. And lastly, he pursues us with favor. He provides, he prepares us for success. He protects us, he prizes us, and he pursues you. He pursues you with his favor, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's how we remembered it in the old days. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and unfailing love. It's like blessings are like little puppet dogs chasing after you. You walk, you run, you move ahead. You know, we spend a lot of time running after things in this life, don't we? We chase after blessings. We chase after material goods. We chase after people's favor. We chase after popularity. We chase after people pleasing. We chase after so many things. We're tired. But you know what? God is chasing after you with good and unfailing love. Look behind you. Don't try to outrun God's blessings for you. Some of us need to stop. We need to repent. We need to just say, no, I'm not going to chase after the things of this world. I'm not going to chase after the idols and gods in my life. I'm going to stop, turn around, and let God's blessings catch up to me. Because all along, God is chasing after you with goodness and mercy and blessing and gifts. And you have no idea. I have no clue because we think we know what will make us happy. And we spend all of our time chasing after those things. And all we have to do is stop, turn around, and let those blessings catch up to us. Will you take a step of faith in this small area? Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where am I chasing after things that aren't pleasing to you? How am I chasing after things that are not you, are not from you? Help me to be still and know that you are God. You know that song? 
Be still and know that I am God. I am your provider. I am your friend. I am your helper. I am your rock. I am your fortress. I am who I am. Jesus says, I am he. Jesus, our big brother, our Dilo, wants to provide for you, prepare you for success, protect you from evil, prize you in front of others, and pursue you with his favor. Stop in the name of love. You know that old song, right? Stop in the name of love, right? Stop and let God's love catch you. Let it wash over you. Let it bless you. Let it prepare a feast before you. Let your cup run over with blessing and abundance and riches. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us, God. Help us to stop and turn around and receive your blessings upon our lives. Help us to stop running away from you and running after the things of this world. Help us to be content and at peace and at rest because you are our good shepherd. You are our big brother. Help us to trust you more today, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your time. See you soon.